And lastly, Wajahar Ali. Thank you. Uh, I'm uh, going to talk about uh, how Pakistanis view the United States of America. Um, uh, broadly speaking, there are two competing narratives uh, about the United States and Pakistan. The first recognizes Washington's significance to world politics and urges the government in Islamabad to work with it. The second uh, maintains that the United States is a factor of instability in the region and Pakistan should try to uh, keep a safe distance from it. Now, opinion polls suggest that uh, the second narrative is gaining alarming popularity in Pakistan. Uh, according to a survey that was commissioned by Al Jazeera in 2009, 59% of Pakistanis believe that the United States is the biggest threat to their country. This is despite the fact that uh, Washington has provided significant military and development assistance to Pakistan in recent years, but it seems that uh, uh, the government of the U.S. Uh, has not really managed to win the hearts and minds of the people of Pakistan. So the obvious question is, why is that so? Uh, there are a number uh, of factors. Uh, let me just start with Afghanistan. Uh, just like uh, most people uh, in uh, the United States believe that the situation in Afghanistan has deteriorated because of Pakistan, many people in Pakistan believe that uh, Pakistan is facing the specter of religious militancy due to uh, the U.S. military presence in the region. Now, obviously, it is very difficult to dismiss that. Uh, uh, the, it is very, very simple to dismiss that claim by pointing out that Pakistan is uh, actually facing the blowback of its own flawed policies of the past. Uh, it was using uh, non-state actors to advance its own interests in the region, and uh, its current predicament is but an outcome of that. However, most people in Pakistan do not view uh, the situation uh, the same way. Um, there are many of them who actually point out that uh, wars and insurrections in Afghanistan have traditionally uh, attracted people from Afghanistan to their side of the Pashtun tribal territories. Uh, the same, uh, uh, the, you know, the, uh, the ethno-religious phenomenon was exploited by the United States and Pakistan in the 80s. Uh, now, obviously, the two countries are at the wrong side of the stick. Uh, the Bush administration's stark ultimatum to Pakistan, you are either with us or against us, and the Musharraf government's subsequent decision to relocate thousands of its troops from uh, its eastern border with India uh, to the porous Durand line uh, complicated the matters even further. Uh, and uh, the Pakistani administration was immediately accused of neglecting Pakistan's own national security interests in fighting Washington's war in the region. Uh, subsequently, it became very difficult for political administrations in Pakistan to take the ownership of this war. And the situation actually persisted even after the militant groups started targeting innocent civilians and security forces in Pakistan. The good news is that most people in Pakistan now realize that uh, these groups are actually posing a mortal threat uh, to their country. But uh, this realization, this awareness has not really brought them any closer to the United States. This is because of the fact that uh, many of them actually believe that Pakistan uh, should not have joined the U.S.-led war on terror in the first place. Uh, most of them do not really factor Pakistan's pre-9-11 involvement in Afghanistan into their equation. Uh, they just believe that if Pakistan walks out of its alliance with Washington today, the Arika Taliban Pakistan militants are going to stop targeting them and uh, their uh, the, and the, and the security um, uh, Pakistan security forces. Uh, so, obviously, the situation in Afghanistan is creating a lot of resentment against the United States of America uh, in Pakistan, but there are also other factors. For instance, Pakistan's national security perception is largely shaped up by its decades-old uh, rivalry uh, with India. And uh, most, of the uh, most of the people of Pakistan actually expect the United States to uh, nudge India and Pakistan towards the negotiating table and, you know, help them uh, resolve their outstanding regional disputes. Uh, but when they look at the U.S. diplomacy in the region, you know, they get mixed signals uh, from Washington. For instance, uh, you know, there is, um, uh, th there are U.S. officials who have actually pointed out that uh, Islamabad has done tremendous work, you know, they, its, its security forces have been fighting militant groups in the northwestern territories of the country, 
And uh, Washington has often pointed out that Pakistan is their foremost ally in the war against religious militancy. But at the same time, a U.S. president uh, goes to India and you know, offers a civil a nuclear tech, um, uh, deal to uh, the administration in New Delhi. Similarly, uh, Pakistanis see that there is uh, an American presidential candidate who wants to address the Kashmir issue. But at the same time, Pakistanis also uh, realize that you know, after this presidential candidate uh, wins the election, his administration is too reluctant to actually take up this issue with India and Pakistan. And uh, so, you know, the average Pakistani sees that uh, the United States wants to take an integrated approach towards the region, but he's also perplexed to see that uh, uh, the administration in Washington does not want its Afpak envoy to, to talk to India and, to, you know, uh, actually um, help India and Pakistan come uh, together. So the view from Pakistan is not always encouraging, it is not always objective. but it is very important to understand. It is very important for us to understand it. It is very important for us to discuss it, mainly because of the fact that the militant groups will be the uh, the biggest beneficiaries if the Pak-U.S. relationship runs out of steam. Uh, it is also important to understand that the U.S. economic assistance uh, does not matter to an ordinary Pakistani because he has not really uh, experienced its trickle-down effect. So. Um, if anything, you know, an average Pakistani sees the U.S. financial assistance to his country as Washington's way of buying uh, his, his, the, the political elite of his country and from keeping them from protecting Pakistan's own national security interests. So, um, of course, uh, there are other dimensions to this issue as well, but I just wanted to, you know, discuss some of uh, these, these factors which I believe uh, must be discussed in order to keep the relationship between uh, Pakistan and the United States up and running. Thank you. S sir, can I cut you off there? I just want to let one more question in the back, Pam Constable, and then we'll go to the panel and then move on. Hi. It was almost almost the opposite of, of Andrew's. Um, I think that a lot of the the sort of scientific rigor of, of, of surveys is it's it's almost it's impossible. And in some ways you almost need the opposite. You need and I was thinking I think it was Ken who made a very quick comment about how only two percent of the people in Fada said they would actually vote for the Taliban or Al Qaeda. Well that's they, they don't want votes. They're looking for something else. Um, People in Pakistan have been saying for many years, oh, well, don't worry about Jamaat Islami, they'll never get the seats. Don't worry about, um, you know, uh, Fazl Rahman, he'll never get the seats. The influence of these groups is much more intangible than I think is often possible to measure. I'm not really sure what to do about that, but I think it's something we all need to be thinking about when we, when one tries to make policy or an analysis based on what we think people think, aside from whether they're telling us what they really think or not, um, I think it's almost, I think some of the worst things that are happening really we can't measure because they're happening yeah. very much in people's hearts. Wajahat, do you have any thoughts on this? Mm. I'm just wondering because if we are going to go away from some of the numbers, yeah, actually, I uh, agree with what you have said uh, because I believe that uh, it is very important uh, to counter the ideology of uh, some of these groups. You have talked about Jamaat Islami, and Jamaat Islami was actually the first organization, uh, Islamic organization in Pakistan, that came up with the concept of an Islamic state, and uh, and you know it defined it uh, at uh, at in, in detail and that concept has been there with us. Now uh, what is happening is that uh, some of the militant groups in Pakistan have actually uh, lapped up that concept but whereas Jamaat-e-Islami was willing to participate in the political process and you know it believed at least to a degree in democracy, uh, these militant groups don't really want to get into any kind of political process. 
So I agree that you know these groups have actually provided an intellectual basis to what these militant groups are doing, and it is very important to address uh, the the ideological issue. Unfortunately, what has happened in Pakistan so far is that we have tried to uh, counter. Uh, religious extremism. We have used um, uh, military force for that. We have uh, also tried um, some uh, economic development in some of the areas. But I think that it is very important to understand the trends, patterns, and causes of uh, religious radicalization and address them because as long as we are not going to discuss uh, uh, the, the Islamic ideology, which is actually providing the intellectual basis to what these militants are doing, we won't really be able to do anything. We won't be able to, you know, win this war convincingly. So Watch I